To get his perspective on the state of Canada's military, we've reached retired General Tom Lawson, who served as Chief of the Defence Staff from 2012 to 2015. He's now President of Thomas J. Lawson & Associates, which provides strategic consulting services for the Canadian Armed Forces. Hello, welcome to the program. Thanks very much for having me. General Lawson, some pretty uh, stark comments in that year-end interview with R. Murray Brewster. Uh, you know, e even alarming, talking about the global order passing a turning point, uh, challenging his team to look at history, talking about the Second World War, making that comparison. I, I wonder if you think the situation is as dire as uh, General Ear says it is. Well, I think it's very important that uh, we recognize what General Ayers' main uh, responsibilities are. Certainly, he has a responsibility to maintain a, a very clear eye on the geopolitical landscape and to provide military advice, both confidential to the minister, the prime minister, uh, cabinet, uh, and, uh, and open advice to committees. Um, but we see him now speaking more openly uh, with the press uh, to, uh, to provide uh, his views. Some of his views are probably a little overstated, but it's because there's something else that's at play here uh, that's really grave and important uh, to, uh, to General Ayer, and that is his main responsibility. Uh, the main responsibility of every chief of defense is going to be to make sure that the Canadian military has enough people, the appropriate numbers of people, that they're equipped to an appropriate level and that they're trained and providing the readiness that the government may need. And General Air sees that all trends are negative in that respect. That's his biggest responsibility, and he needs to reverse that. He's using every tool he uh, has, including the press and uh, educating Canadians on the uh, geopolitical landscape, to try and affect a change in that respect. When you say, I mean, there's a bit to unpack there. When you talk about overstating the way things are, I, I wonder what you think is a bridge too far do you agree for instance that we are dealing with we're on the cusp we're in the midst of a change in in the global order well i, I think the global order is constantly changing and certainly last year uh, with the invasion of ukraine we saw an enormous um imperialistic move uh, that we haven't seen for decades and decades so uh, yeah that's a very important thing but you know to make a statement for instance that uh, russia is attempting to uh, remake the world in its own political image probably overstated i mean russia is a very dangerous country right now we see it in ukraine every every day they're uh, nuclear uh, armed of course uh, and they threaten it they appear to have unhinged leadership however Every trend dealing with Russia suggests they're a fading power. Um, you know, the, their economy is in the tank. Uh, it was before the invasion into Ukraine. Uh, and, uh, you know, they just lost a, a, a million people who have emigrated, young men who have emigrated as a result of, uh, of the conscription. Uh, so, and, and their demographics are terrible. Uh, their economy is terrible. So uh, I, I think although they're very dangerous now to say that they're trying to remake the world in their, uh, in their image. And, and same with China. Uh, so I, I, I think China has to make sure that their economy remains strong. What, one part I want to particularly understand is uh, we played that clip from Murray's interview where, where he talks about the urgency of essentially rearming the military. Is it as urgent as he says, or is that part of this uh, this overstatement, that, that this campaign, I guess, to bring the public on side that you're describing? No, no, that's not overstatement. So that deals with his main responsibility, and that is to make sure that Canada is, is well provided in terms of readiness. And to do that, he needs his numbers. He's 10,000 men and women in uniform short. Uh, it, it's just a terrible situation. Now, many militaries find themselves in, the same, in, in a similar situation as a result of not being able to carry out any training during uh, COVID. Uh, but now that that has receded and our schools are back open, the lineups aren't there for various reasons, and that has to be reversed. The equipment, th that's kind of a different thing. That's always a long and very difficult process, but there's been some good news recently on that front. And I think the, the uh, Canadian uh, government uh, in power now has indicated that uh, they're committed uh, to, to refurbishing the military in some respects. 
We all know that the, the history of equipping the Canadian military is a, a long saga, I suppose we could call it. Uh, Post-Afghanistan, the Army was reorganized and ready to fight different kinds of wars. The ground-based air defense system was retired uh, essentially without replacement. The close combat vehicle uh, was cancelled. I believe that was on your watch. In hindsight, now that we see the way things have played out with, for instance, Russia's war on Ukraine, were those mistakes? Um, mistakes. We, we maintained our tanks, uh, we maintained our, our artillery. Um, the uh, cancellation of the CCAV was a, a good move and that the Army uh, had decided they no longer needed that. Uh, however, if, if the point you're making is that uh, procurement is a very difficult game, you're absolutely right there. The military, although it's equipment for the military we're talking about, military only gets one vote. Uh, uh, industry gets a vote. Uh, public works gets a vote. There are huge dynamics in these very, very large kind of once-per-generation contracts. Uh, however, having said that, just recently there's been an announcement that Canada will replace its current fighters with the F-35 and uh, will refurbish its uh, rotary wing search and rescue um, helicopters, the cormorants. Uh, and those are billion to $2 billion uh, for the, the helicopters and many more billions than that for fighters. Of course, ships are on the way. It's such a long process, but these things are coming. First and foremost, uh, General Air needs numbers. He needs yeah. people, and with people come hope. Well, and, and we know that there are efforts to um, address some of the issues that are causing some of these recruitment challenges. I, I think of uh, some of the, the sexual harassment, sexual misconduct cases. But I, I guess in closing, what I would like to know from you is, as those efforts are underway to bring more members of the Canadian Armed Forces on board, right now, do you think that the Canadian military is trying to do too much? Is it stretched too thin? Uh, that's uh, that's always going to be anybody who plays um, uh, computer games will know that as you uh, fight whatever battle your uh, software is asking you to fight, you have to keep an eye on your lifeline. Uh, and the military, it, it's doubly true. This is real life, and if we stretch uh, those men and women who are combat ready too thin by sending them out domestically and, and around uh, our, our various uh, theaters. Uh, you can lose them. You can ask too much of them. So uh, it's something I know is first and foremost on General Air's mind and, and his commanders. And it's, but you, you can't say no uh, all the time. Uh, how do you say no to the Ukrainians uh, and the nations that are right beside Ukraine who want to make sure that NATO is, uh, is giving a good, strong message to Russia and Canada is part of that? Okay, well, all uh, very much part of a conversation that we're going to be watching in the new year. Thank you for putting it all into perspective for us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.